Hello and welcome to the second masterclass on progressions. Now the goal of these videos is to go over some of the uh, functionality that's hidden away and also discuss some of the new functionality that have been added uh, since the last video and uh, I'm going to go over some of these new features now. Now I have a set of uh, chords here in song mode so let's have a listen to those. may have noticed a little chevron in the top corner of the block chord button meaning we can long press this button and we now have a bunch of options in here uh, of which um, uh, work in block chord mode uh, so instead of just a plain block chord we can get various other different types of um, arpeggiated patterns If we long press the arpeggiator uh, button, uh, we also have the ability to set swing. Now, the swing uh, works on any arpeggiation that's going on, including that of the block chord. You can actually choose a regular or a hard swing in either direction. as part of this we also have a triggered bass mode uh, which doesn't sound very good with a piano but if we were to go to the uh, settings menu we can change the output port for the bass part and uh, if I change the output port to port 2 you'll hear that there's a different instrument there and it sounds a lot better with a, a synth bass now we could also change the output of block chord mode as well and send to another instrument in block chord mode and as you can see here, I've got some nice vocal uh, vocal haars, uh, there. but I can uh, I can go really extreme here because I've got two instruments set there on port four. So I think that bass is getting a little bit drowned out, so let's just turn that up a bit. <laughs> idea we can control the output ports for uh, arpeggiator and strumming mode also so you may want to apply uh, a more applicable uh, instrument to the strummer um, and a, you know obviously more of a, a, a piano type instrument um, for the app now if we click the hamburger menu on any of these instruments and look at MIDI sources you can see that uh, we're simply connected to one of the output ports on uh, on uh, progressions so each instrument is just looking at a different port in this instance uh, bs16 was providing the uh, triggered bass and that was just listening to uh, progressions midi port 2. now some people don't like to use ports and would rather use channels uh, there is a way of um, altering the output channel for the bass and the uh, lead parts by clicking this little button here and uh, we get to choose the output bass channel and then the accompaniment channel whether that be block chords, arp or strum now that's really used for uh, song mode because you can change this parameter as part of a song style but it can also be used outside of song mode if required now another little gem of wisdom while I'm here is that if you want to mute the output while the, uh, while the song is playing uh, you can long press on this play button and although the sequencer will keep going no so no midi data will actually be output and you can resume at any point just by uh by long pressing that uh, play button again now that's very useful if you don't want to lose your song position but you want to um audition another instrument somewhere now i know garage band is a very very popular app and uh, you can still use progressions in GarageBand even though it doesn't support uh, MIDI AUV3 devices. In this case, I've loaded uh, uh, progressions as an instrument and uh, we can go full screen here, do everything we could inside of uh, AUM um, and it 
it's using its own inter internal instrument which does, doesn't sound fantastic but it's good enough for you to actually create your chord progressions now as long as sync mode is turned on we can hit record and um, progressions will start playing back using the internal sound and uh, once the loop is is complete it will go back into playback mode but uh, there's one important thing that you must remember to do once the recording is complete which is stop everything and uh, disable uh, host sync mode uh, and that stops uh, the internal sound playing as long as well as the midi notes that have been sent uh, through to progressions you also should enable this uh, input mode which allows it to take the midi uh, notes being played by GarageBand and hear them sound So as you can hear the uh, progression had recorded into GarageBand and if you notice just below this track I have another track, a piano track and uh, we're able to actually take this recorded track from uh, progressions and drag that down on top of the piano instrument and, uh, and then use that uh, track uh, with the piano. Now that frees up progressions to go away and, uh, and, and use for creating more chord sequences which again you can drag to other instruments. Now another useful function is the hold pedal and to demonstrate that I'm going to start this little sequence playing and I'm going to turn down the note gate so that we get a very staccato like sound. Now when I engage the hold pedal you, it's just like a whole pedal on a piano, it holds the notes. The whole pedal is released at the end of every measure. The new chord is engaged and the whole pedal is pressed again. So it's simulating you using a whole pedal on a uh, piano. Now the nice thing about this is the whole pedal can be assigned as part of a style in a song. So if I pull up, pull up the song editor, we can see that this part of the song, there's a style applied to that first element. Now I'm going to turn the whole pedal on and reapply the style. And um, if I was to turn the whole pedal off and hit that uh, first element again, you'll see the whole pedal is engaged. So it can be, it can be applied or unremoved at different parts of a song. Now in the previous masterclass, we went over some ways of backing up. Uh, presets, ARP and strumming presets using web transfer but some of you don't use or tell me you don't use a PC so the other way obviously is to be able to uh, copy them to a folder in the filer so providing the files apps in the dock uh, just swipe up from the bottom of the screen tap and hold the files app and then drag it up to the side of the screen I'm just going to move the progressions window to the left a little bit because we need to get at the load button above the app editor. Now this will bring up a window of all your saved apps and from here we can just simply drag hold, tap hold and drag uh, into the uh, files app. Now if I delete that file just by swiping to the left uh, from my uh, local folder I can drag that same file back again and you'll see that uh, it's copied it back. So it's a good way of backing up your apps. If you want to pass them on to friends, you can do it this way. And it's ex exactly the same with the strummer. If we switch to the strummer, we can drag these files backwards and forwards. And although I'm not going to show it here, you can do the same with your completed saved sessions. So all your song data can be backed up that way too. So that wraps up this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to thumb up this video. See you next time.